you might have heard a lot about these recently, iron air batteries, and that's because of Form Energy breaking ground on their new iron air battery factory. So what I thought I'd do was talk a little bit about metal air batteries and then how show you how to go around making one yourself that's actually pretty easy to do. This, which is Hyundai here, is in fact a great big lot of rusting metal. Now, that might not seem very exciting at first, but what's going on in here is exactly the process for the latest and greatest battery. What it's doing is this. This is rusting. And it's rusting really, really slowly. And we think of rusting, which is the addition of oxy oxygen, incidentally, as being a slow process. Now, it's only a slow process because what we've got here is a massive lump of steel. And that steel has a very, very small surface area to volume ratio. So what I've got here is a piece of steel wool. This is one of those that I don't recommend you do at home. So we've got a piece of steel wool, and all that that is, is it's the same material here, but with a much, much bigger surface area to volume ratio. And I can actually make that oxidize in the way that you recognize as burning relatively easily, just by touching a 9 volt battery to it. So if I touch a 9 volt battery to that, you'll recognize it almost immediately as burning. And there it goes. Now it's quite slow because there's not much oxygen in there, but I can get it to go faster by adding more reactant. <laughs> what I've got in here is iron powder, and I put the iron powder into this straw. There we go. Now we spent such a lot of effort in trying to stop metals from rusting, it might be odd to consider it as an ability to rust, but that ability to rust is the basis of all metal air batteries. So there's a lot of energy in rusting metal, and one way to control it is to control the size of the particle. But why would we want such a thing? Well, a battery, of course, is two chemicals that react to give out the energy. And if one of those chemicals is just the air, then the battery doesn't have to port it around. All we need is one side in the actual battery. So metal air batteries are very energy dense. They have a lot of energy for the weight of them because we don't need the other side of the battery. It's in the air. And, of course, that's very significant to things like cars. In terms of production, it's not very convenient to try and control a metal air battery by doing things like particle size. It's much better if you can control that rate of reaction by using a catalyst. This is a piece of magnesium. Now, it's, again, relatively easy to get hold of magnesium. This stuff is printer's plate, actually. So if you're having um, printing done, or if you're having hot foil or something like that, they use big, thick blocks of this stuff. It's also the stuff that you find in fire starters. That's magnesium as well. So here is my piece of magnesium. Here is my table salt water floral foam. And I pop the stainless steel current collector. There you go, turning. Now I've got my special carbon. See the difference in the power there. Okay, so really quite an impressive difference for laying on this bit of carbon. And of course the immediate question is, what is that special treatment? And I'm about to tell you. These are metal air batteries. They in fact work because the metal is rusting in a controlled way with the oxygen in the air. Now, it will do that all by itself. Iron does that if you just leave it lying outside. It's just very, very slow. Here we're in increasing it and we're increasing it by using a catalyst and this piece of carbon has been coated with the catalyst. Now there's a whole lot of catalysts you can use and if money is no ob object then platinum does really really well but for most of us money is a real object and what we need is a catalyst that is easy to apply and really quite cheap and there is one. The catalyst on here is in fact manganese dioxide. Now, the manganese dioxide has a nanoparticle form, but the nanoparticles are incredibly easy to make. All we actually need is some ordinary water and some of this stuff, which is potassium permanganate. Buy this in the chemist in 
two or three gram lots very, very easily. And the amount you need is absolutely tiny. So we've got here about 150 to 200 milliliters of water and we need about that much. It's about 0.1 of a gram. It's a tiny, tiny amount that you need. And you pop that in there and that will go the beautiful bright purple color that we know manganese dioxide, uh, potassium from manganate to be. So it's this beautiful purple color. You um, use this actually as a topical antiseptic, which is why you can get it from the chemist. But manganese, uh, potassium from manganate has a very curious property. Again, if we take a bit of this carbon felt, and again, you can do this with any activated carbon. The potassium permanganate will attack the surface of the activated carbon. So we pop our felt in there and make sure it's covered. Now it won't do it at room temperature. It has to be somewhere between about 60 to 90 degrees centigrade. And you stir that at 60 to 90 degrees centigrade for about two hours. That potassium permanganate will be adsorbed onto the surface of the carbon, attack it, and break down to nanoparticles of manganese dioxide. If you make this too strong, you'll get particles of manganese dioxide and they won't work. You need nanoparticles. And you control the size of the nanoparticles by concentration. So these are very weak solutions. You want them in the order of 0.05 to 0.01 molar concentrations. And stir that, that will actually just go clear. It'll go clear and you'll see your felt inside. Get your felt out, give it a wash and dry it, and you'll end up with something that looks identical to what you started with. They look no different at all. But this one will have the manganese dioxide nanoparticles on it. Now, manganese dioxide nanoparticles on carbon are catalytic for something called the oxygen reduction reaction. And that is where we get that extra power from. This is allowing the oxygen to filter into the carbon, react with the material in the electrolyte, and attack the surface of the magnesium, turning it into man uh, magnesium oxide. So we are rusting the magnesium in a very controlled way, using a nanoparticulate catalyst that is extremely cheap and easy to make. And gives awesome results. This will last until the magnesium is eaten away. It's about 1.85 volts that you get from it. It'll last for as long as the magnesium lasts. When you need to charge it again, then you put more magnesium in there because you are using a catalyst. The good thing about this, obviously, if it's in a dry form, so we now have a dry bit of Oasis and a dry bit of our catalyst, then we pop them on there and there, and we get absolutely nothing, which is awesome because that will last forever and then all we actually need to do to get this thing going is take some ordinary salt water and wet that oasis and there we go Isn't that amazing? Anyway, I thought I would share that all with you because I thought it was interesting. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.